Here's my two big blueberry bushes where I get all my blueberries from every year. They get fully loaded down. They're starting to ripen up, so we'll be picking all these. Mm -hmm. So with these blueberries, I like to make sure I wash them as I collect them and get them really good and clean. That way there ain't no bugs or anything funky on them. And then I'll let them dry up a second before I freeze them. And that way they don't stick together real bad and you know they're clean when you put them away. As for the other berries, I just get them in bulk and wash them all at once right as I use them because they will go bad way too fast for blackberries. But blueberries you can freeze for a long time. All right, here we are at the blackberry fields and we make sure that we only pick where it says no spray zone that way you're not getting pesticides or any types of uh, bad stuff you know that they might spray along the side of the highways as you can see they're not all fully ripe yet there's only few head ones that are ripe so we're just gonna have to keep picking this week and then uh, I'll show you guys what we collect and how much uh, berries we get as we wash them all right, as you guys can see a little bit later in the week and they're pretty much all getting way more riper so we're gonna be able to fill our cache a lot faster see you guys back at the house when we clean them all right you guys can see this is our uh haul from today uh last week we didn't get very many but this week there's a lot more berries on the vine this is enough to do about one batch worth so I'm going to show you guys how we clean these before we move on to the next step without mashing them all out. But this should be enough to do at least one batch for one five gallon card boy. All right, I'm going to take them over to the sink. Okay, so now that we got our berries in the sink, I got me a strainer that's got a moderate size hole in it. And I'm going to turn this water on real nice and cold. And I'm gonna let it start filling up this bowl right here to wash away a bunch of those hairs that you see all over them. And as it's going, I'm gonna gently pick out berries and start cleaning them off like this right here and moving them over to this other side. And you're gonna want it to flood pretty good because you can see all the floaties in here. And that's basically what we wanna get off is all those floaties. So once you get it, all the floaties off, you can start going through each one and cleaning them real good and setting them over inside of your strainer and that way you don't get a bunch of nasty stuff inside of your berries I mean nobody wants that inside of their jellies jams or mashes so and we like to make a bunch of jelly jam and mash here so we're gonna clean them all really good after I get them good and clean I'll show you guys what we do next all right, now that you guys got your berries all washed and cleaned and all the funkies out of them, uh, you're going to want to make sure you have a nice five gallon bucket and then some kind of a hard pot, something you can smash around in without getting it to break or leak on you. And you're also going to need like a bean smasher. This is what I use. I like the bean smasher. It works really good. I can fly through it real fast. You're also going to want a piece of material, something that's breathable that will go over the top. Uh, this ain't set in stone, but you basically need something to make sure that this breathes and doesn't allow fungus gnats in it. And I also get a piece of wire like this. And this piece of wire goes around the outside brim of this barrel, just like this, when I'm done. And I can seal it off real nice and tight to where I know it, nothing gets in it. So that way it can breathe for a few days until we get it to the carboy and not get bugs in it. Cause if not, you'll get tons of fungus gnats. So first thing I do is I just, I pour in some berries into my bowl here, to my pot, and then I smash them out. So I take my uh, bean smasher and I go through and I make sure I break all the berries up really nice and good I want to make sure I release all the juices I have a blender and you can use a blender for this but uh, I found that the blender is such a pain in the butt to clean and you could do it just as fast with this thing I mean it works really well so once you get your berries broke up like that you're just gonna add it to the five gallon bucket over here and you're just gonna keep going through all of these until you get it all into the bucket and you want to make sure that you hit this line on this bucket that still leaves you enough 
that still leaves you enough time, uh, I mean enough space to add the sugar and the yeast, that way you don't overflow your bucket. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this and then I'll show you guys what it looks like when I get done mashing them out. All right, now that you got it to the line you wanted it at and leaving room for sugar, uh, you're gonna go ahead and add your Fleischmann's Rapid Rise yeast. I use one pouch per five gallon puck bucket. And then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add this, cover it back up. I'm not gonna add my sugar for a couple of days until I taste it and I start to see that it's fermenting. Then I'm going to add my sugar, allowing the uh, yeast to eat up some of the natural sugars of the plant, of the blackberries, before I add my sugar. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get it covered up. I'll show you what that looks like. All right, got it covered up. I got my wire band around it, and I just bend these back towards the material so don't poke nobody. And it's semi-tight, but that'll keep all the bugs and gnats out. I'm just going to slide it out of the way over here, and then we'll come and check on it every day stirring it and as soon as I start to taste a little bit of fermentation then I'm gonna go ahead and add my sugar so it's been about 24 hours and already I can smell through the material here that it's starting to pop off so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add about half of a 10 pound bag of sugar for every five gallon bucket you're gonna want at least at least three to five uh, pounds of sugar in it uh, with the berries, I like to go about, like I said, half a bag. It, it, the sweetness that you taste in it will go away. So you think, oh, that's real sweet. Don't worry, the sugar will burn off to alcohol. So I'm going to open this bad boy up. Try not to drop my material down in it. Set this off to the side. I'm going to take this sugar. And I'm going to start pouring my sugar in. about half a little bit more a tiny bit more all right then I'm gonna use this ladle here and I'm gonna make sure it mixes up and breaks itself down real good this is the only ladle I got long enough to actually touch the bucket without getting your hand in it so that's why I like to use this ladle but got to make sure it's mixed up and broke down real good you don't want big clumps in there so you're just gonna start mixing it up once you guys get it all mixed up you're gonna put the top back on it and seal it back off and then you're gonna let it sit right now if you were to taste this it's ex gonna be extremely sweet again so what you got to do is you got to let it sit until it starts to ferment Uh oh I'm getting it everywhere let me try to wash this thing out. It's got a lot of sugar in there. But you want to try to keep it clean. I'll clean it up and get the top back on it and show you guys after we're done. And we'll talk more about what you're looking for. All right. Now that I got the top back on it and the sugar in it, uh, this only took 24 hours to pop off. Sometimes it could take longer depending on the temperature. It's summer here. Our house has been pretty warm, so it really got it going fast. So don't be afraid if it takes three days, four days before it starts to really ferment. That's okay. That happens. Now that it is starting to ferment, we added all the sugar back and it's sweet again. I'm going to wait until I can taste it starting to lose that sweetness. Um, like I said, temperature depends on how long that takes. Uh, I'm going to check it every day and stir it every day. But the second that I start to taste that that sweetness has gone away and it's starting to taste like alcohol is when I'm gonna strain this out and get it into the carboy. And I'll show you guys what that carboy consists of before we get to that process. That way you guys can see what you're gonna need ahead of time. But it's super simple. Uh, it's just time sensitive. So you wanna make sure that you smell it because you don't want it to finish here and start turning to vinegar because you let it go too long and it's exposed to all this air. So you wanna catch it right at the right point. So we're gonna check it tomorrow and then as soon as I start to feel that that sugar's starting to get really eaten up in there, we're gonna strain it, uh, get it put into the carboy, strained of all the pulp, and then let it sit and do its thing in the carboy. All right, I'll show you guys uh, what you're gonna need for the carboy first before the press. Okay, so this is a basic water bottle that's BPA safe that you can buy at just about any grocery store for about 16 bucks. Uh, they come with this lid 
It's a rubber lid with a seal in the inside. And as you can see, I modified it with a piece of black hose, making sure that it's sealed real good with some tape. That way it doesn't come apart. This doesn't ever touch the alcohol, but it basically is gonna go on here like this. <clears throat> and it seals super tight and it's gonna lean over like that. Okay, so with the, when you're done with this bucket and you get it all strained out and into the carboy, you're gonna flip that bucket over after you clean it and set it next to it. So it builds like a little shelf right next to your carboy that you made. Then you're gonna want a mason jar like this that you have the lid still, just not the insert, and a piece of tin foil. And I'll show you what you do with that. I'll make it for it real fast and then show you what it looks like. All right, so there it is. Basically what I did was I put the piece of tin foil down over the glass jar and then tighten the lid down on it. Um, then you can take like an X-Acto blade or something like this and gently cut yourself a star in the center and then poke some little holes around the outside edges. About 20 of them should be enough, just little tiny holes. And what that does is it's gonna allow it to breathe later and allow you to poke this black hose down into it. And we'll talk more about what you need this for, for the carboy, uh, as soon as we get ready to use it. But this is something that you're gonna wanna have prepared, is this glass jar with the tin foil on top and that carboy or old water bottle with the sealed lid and a hose protruding from it that's long enough to arch over and not go below level. So that way you can bend it over without kinking it and set it up on something. All right, we'll talk about what you're gonna need for pressing your pulp and uh, the couple different methods for doing that. All right, this is a hydraulic jack press from Harbor Freight. It costs about 40 bucks. There's a big gap in here. And in this gap, you put your plates like this, one that sits inside of another one, got holes in it sits inside of another pan that's got a hole at the front and when you compress it it squeezes all the pulp out for uh, making mash with like apples and things that have a lot heavier pulp and is a lot harder to squeeze out you're gonna want one of these and they cost about 40 bucks but you don't need this I'm gonna show you the way we do berries because they have a lot less pulp and it's a lot easier to do so I'll show you guys that way so instead of the hydraulic press it's uh, such a pain in the butt to clean and all that jazz we're just gonna use a strainer, a bowl, and a piece of material, like a corner of a pillowcase, or uh, you can make one like this. These are these sleeve bags. Uh, whichever way you do it, I just like to lay it out here like this, and then I'll scoop my material into it and let it drain and squeeze the berries out. And then I'll be sure to use another bowl over here to put all my pulp in. And then as I get this glass bowl full, I'll start to pour it into my carboy. And I'll show you guys how that goes. All right, I got it all laid out on the floor over here so I can actually do it. And if I make a mess, I don't get it everywhere. I'm gonna take my cover off. This guy here, if I could do it one-handed. Okay, so there's our mash. It's super popping off pretty hard. I got my plate over here so I could set this back down without making too big of a mess. Then you're just gonna wanna get scoops of it and get it right on top of the, on top of your material that you're gonna use for your screen. And the top is always gonna be where all the pulp sits. It wants to float to the top. So you're gonna get that out first. Set your dish, set your thing down over here so you don't get the floor dirty. Then you're going to pick this up and start squeezing it to squeeze all the alcohol out of it or the liquid. So we just want the pulp to be left there. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that. I only got one hand right now. So I'm going to go ahead and start working my way through this. And then as I fill up my glass bowl, I'm going to pour it over here into my carboy where I got a funnel so it'll go down in it. And I'll show you guys what I what it looks like when I get done. All right, so we made it past all the pressing. I got my pulp here. It's all pretty wrung out. I got about that much there. Now I take this uh, black trash bag and I like to lay it out where I'm gonna set up at. We could go ahead and get rid of this here. Get rid of that. Then I like to set this bad boy 
in the trash bag because what we're going to do is we're going to use it to block the light and keep the light out of it. And we're going to get it just like that. And this is where your cap with the hose comes into play. You're going to make sure that bad boy's on there good and tight until it seals. Remember I said you're going to wash your bucket out and use it as a stand. Well, there it is. And then you're going to get your jar and you're going to take this here and you're going to poke a hole through it like this. Just like that until you got a hole in the top. And then I'm going to fill it up with water. I'll be right back. Let me go get some water in it. All right, so we're back and we got it about halfway full. You're going to take your black hose that comes from your from your uh, water bottle and you're going to wedge it down in there like this right here to where that water is covering the tip of that hose. Let me scrunch it over a little bit more. This thing's been sitting for a while, so it's kind of lost its shape. There it goes. And you're going to see right away it's going to start blowing bubbles. And that's what you want to see is those bubbles right there. So once it starts kicking bubbles, uh, or once it stops kicking bubbles, you'll know it's done. I'm sorry. But you can see now this. there's no way for bugs or any bacteria or bad air to get back into this bottle. You're gonna to wanna to take your trash bag and make sure it's as light tight as possible. So that way it doesn't get a bunch of light just by wrapping it up real tight. And voila, you're done. Now all you gotta do is let that sit until this bad boy stops kicking bubbles. But it's gonna be kicking bubbles for probably like 15, 20 days. And then I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's all done kicking bubbles. But that's the end of your mash. That's all it takes to get your mash prepped right there. You're just gonna watch for bubbles to stop and then you're all done. Day number two and still bubbling strong. Come back and check it tomorrow. All right, uh, once you guys know that your bubbling stopped, you're gonna wanna get a piece of wire, uh, the length of the water bottle and plus, that way it can have some bends in it as well as uh, hook over the top of the water bottle and not fall down inside of the water bottle. Uh, I make this little bend. I don't know if you can see this in the wire. It gives this a good tight grip, yet allows me to adjust it like this. That allows me to go whether I want to go this finger depth off the bottom, or if I want to be way up here and be this far off the bottom. And that keeps you from sucking up gunk when you're siphoning. And I'll show you guys how this works. Okay, here we have our siphon hose. I set my depth. I'm going to go ahead and slide it down inside here like this and try not to stir it up. And then I'm gonna bend the end over the edge of the barrel so it don't go nowhere. I got my other end here in my hand. I got a pitcher here. Now I'm gonna just come down here and I'm gonna give it a tiny little suck to siphon it out. And then it'll get going just like that right there. And that's how you siphon it out. And you're gonna let it go, nice slow motion. And take its time so that we don't stir up anything on the bottom. All right, there you go. You see me make my mash. Now you could either put it in ball mason jars like this one here, and it'll last for quite a while if you're going to be drinking on it. And if you want it to last a lot longer, you can go ahead and bottle it like a normal person would in a bottle with a cork. Make sure you lean them on their side. That way the cork always stays moist and doesn't dry out. It'll preserve it for a lot longer. And if you really want to make it last a long time, you could go ahead and wax the end of it and that'll help it preserve it even longer. But then you can label them, do all kinds of cool shit. But there it is, homemade mash, the simple way. All right, guys, be sure to like and subscribe. See you on the next one.